tell me about your upcoming tour with the High Kings. Uh, yeah, looking forward to that. Uh, first time we've done a sort of dual headline tour like this. Um, the guys are great. You know, we've uh, enjoyed each other's band bands for years. So um, I think it's a, it's a really great uh, combination. Be be nice to play together on a, a bunch of songs and uh, listen to those guys and have them listen to us. And I think it's going to be a great night. Have you guys performed much before or done shows together before? We've done festivals together, you know, where we've been um, on the same stage at different times. So we've uh, had them up on stage uh, with us singing a few songs and vice versa. But nothing nothing organized uh, to this level. I noticed you mentioned a little bit that you guys might do some, some playing or jamming together. Is that kind of a hopeful plan as the tour goes? It is. It is. We've spoken about um, half a dozen songs uh, that... Uh, we're going to do together and I'm sure as we progress too we'll get uh, various members up with us and, and vice versa you know we'll uh, they've got a lot of, uh, of material to play and we've got a lot of material to play so I think the hardest part of the whole thing is going to be uh, is choosing the you know what songs we leave out from the night yeah, uh, that's always something I like asking bands how do you choose what you're going to play each night yeah I do the uh, the set list and um, you know, I I, I like to um, vary the dynamics of it. Bring it up, take it down, bring it back up again. Um, you know, we've got 14 albums, so a, a lot of material there. And it's no matter no matter what I do, there's always going to be people out there that uh, wish we played something something else. Um, we vary it slightly every night. Um, so it is is a different set list every night. It it gets increasingly you'd think it would get easier as, as you uh progress in your career, but but now we have more songs that are popular, so uh, you know, we have to do all of those and it just leaves us a few slots left over for some deep cuts or some new stuff. Yeah, you think about those bands that first go out and they only have like five songs, but we've been doing it a while. We've been doing it a while, yeah. And and you know, look, we've uh, there's one or two songs that we'll drop for years at a time, and popular songs too. Um, you know, people are yelling out the name of the song the whole show, I'm like, nah, you know, we've stopped doing that for a while. And then we'll bring it back in again and and enjoy it all over again. Um, so it's not like if we if we drop it from the set list, it's not like it's gone forever. We uh, we do bring bring old songs back. Um, on quite a regular basis. That would be nice for, for those playing and those going regularly to kind of cycle things in and out. Yeah, I think so. You know, we have a lot of fans that have seen us multiple times. Um, so for them, it's nice when we do a deep cut. Uh, it might be a track that they they uh, is a particular favorite of the uh, of them, and uh, you know we'll 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 dig in there. We'll dig we'll dig deep. We'll find those tracks. We've been playing a couple of uh, two or three songs actually that uh, we haven't done in, in uh, we've probably only played two or three times in our whole career. So nice to nice to have those in the set now. So um, you know you you did mention you guys have been around for a while, but I want to go back to um, I, I heard you guys were initially. Uh, kind of like a pub band how did you you guys start how did you find each other um yeah i've I'd, I'd been in various bands uh before that and i was in uh we all had you know uh full-time jobs and um i the irish pub an irish pub opened up a block from my house um and patrick murphy was uh, working as a bartender and manager of the place so i walked in and met him pretty much the first day the pub opened uh, and shook hands and i saw him sing a couple of songs with uh, a band that they had in there and uh, i thought he was extremely entertaining and um i would throw parties at my place down the road uh, the next block down after the pub closed and people would from the pub would come over and we'd sing songs and he, then he knew i played and you know, he, uh, we sort of gradually uh, just started playing together and playing at the pub there on Sunday night. The whole Titanic thing happened and, uh, you know, made us a sort of a national act, so it moved pretty fast. I was very curious. How did the Titanic thing happen? Because you guys didn't even have an, an album out yet, right? Uh, no, we didn't. Um, we were working on, you know, just doing some recordings. We pretty much had one to go, but um, they saw us, a uh, musical director saw us playing at a festival and um, thought it was extremely entertaining and exactly what was needed for the for the movie. So um, they came down and saw us at the pub play, and that's it. Next thing we know, we were in the movie down in Mexico where it was filmed on set um, and uh, history. What's the experience like going from, you know, you're used to festivals and, and general shows and now you're on a movie set? Well, it was uh, exhilarating. You know, we'd lived in Los Angeles uh, and I worked in the movie industry there um, in advertising for 
for years. I was on sets and around um, around the movie making process quite a lot. But this was this was pretty special, you know. We were we were treated the same as all the other actors on board. There was Leonardo DiCaprio at his dressing room next to ours, and um, you know we sat, we ate from the same places as, as Kate Winslet and, and Leo on set, and uh, uh, it was you know it was it was huge for us. Um, just a massive yeah. experience, really, just just to, to see the scale of this uh, production. Yeah, yeah, that's also this has got to be very interesting for a fairly new band. Yeah, yeah. It, I mean, we were we were new, um, but uh, you know, it, it's it, it's uh, weird things happen in Los Angeles all the time. So people are making movies here, there, and everywhere. Not all of those movies end up being the biggest movie of all time. So it, it, <laughs> we uh, we started at the top and we're working our way down. There you go. Uh, I, I do want to ask. I think you guys. Um, I, I've actually talked to a lot of Irish bands lately, and I do think you have a very interesting um, ratio between traditional songs and your own original songs and albums. You know, kind of what's your process for for choosing a traditional song to record, and how do you decide this is how many we want to include, this is how many originals we really want to go for this time? Yeah. Um. We, you know, we. I write most of the material, um, and you know we're, we were working on an album before the pandemic hit, so we've sort of got one to go. We just got to find time now to get in the studio and, and record it. You know, I've got about probably about twenty songs uh, waiting to go, and we will take some of the traditions, um, traditional uh, music that, that exists, and sort of weave it in and out of those original songs. So it gives it a, a very, you know, instantly sort of vintage feel. Um, we will choose one or two, um, you know, we're, we've, we've done songs in Gaelic before, which is always very interesting to do. Um, and again, sort of interpret it our, our way. During the pandemic, we did a lot of the old pub songs. We recorded those and put those out on Spotify to sort of cover a lot of that uh, old old pub standards that, uh, that we started off playing. Um, so we've covered a lot of that ground now. I think the next album will pretty much be all original songs. And uh, even the even the, the sets of what you might call traditional music, the, the bagpipe and fiddle tunes, uh, we're doing a lot of that um, as, as original writing from, uh, from Pete Purvis uh, and, and Natalia. So it's going to be, I think, uh, 95% original this next album. Um, sorry, I know that wasn't a concise answer there, but it's just, <laughs> it's actually very reflective of the way it's done. There's no, there's no methodology to it. It's not like, okay, we need, you know, two, two of this, two of that. It's a, uh, it's just a case of what comes out, what's on the table when we, uh, when we go into the studio. That makes a lot of sense. That's that's a good answer. I, I'd be surprised if it was a specific. Okay, every album we need this many. Yeah, you know, I always have an idea in my head, almost like like writing a um, set list. You know, where um, I would like the dynamics of it um, to to move and and take you to different sort of emotional places. Um, so you have a little bit of a framework uh, to work out. I need a fast song. I need, I need a ballad. But that's not always what comes out. <laughs> So it really is once you've got your deadline of studio time looming, you know, you gather what you have and, and go into the studio and, and, and that's it, you know. You walk out with what you walk out with. So I've read that you guys really pride yourself on, on touring a lot. Um, how does the, the commitment to being on the road kind of shape your band and, and, and your performance? Um, we we do enjoy it. We um, we always felt like we've said this from day one that the audience is just the you know, the member of the band. Um, we're all in this together, and their energy and our energy sort of connect in the in the night. Um, we we put smiles on our own faces every night. We we enjoy the heck of it, and we know uh, that translates to smiles on audience faces out there. As as, as corny as that sounds, we really do uh, try and put smiles on faces, and um, you know that becomes addicting. It's it, it, it's a thrill to be out there and uh, have people enjoying what you do. It's instant gratification. Um, there's so many jobs out there that just that have you know zero. You get zero accolades for finishing the day, but we get it instantly. Um, the, the the road is as long as it's ever been. It's probably more difficult now after the pandemic to tour, much more difficult to tour actually. Um, it's starting to settle down. Um, things are starting to get efficient again and um, restaffed, but it, it it's definitely been a difficult, difficult time for all musicians getting back on the road. A lot of, uh, you know, hotels, restaurants, and the things that we sort of have to, the resources we have to rely upon um, on our journeys have been sort of understaffed and uh, expensive to uh, expensive to use. So 
Anyway, it's starting to settle down on the road now, and, and things are starting to smooth out again. But it's been a tough, tough few years. I talked to a lot of acts who've been touring for a few decades, and almost all of them are like, I still love playing live. I just hate going from place to place. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if it's worth it, you know, we've been doing this so long, so 25 years, that, um, that and, you know, we've reached a, a level of comfort that is that is really quite acceptable um, with nice hotels and, and decent places to eat. Um, and, uh, you know, we work it out. Um, we have a great crew guys that get us through just about everything. And we've we've dealt with, well, you know, it's what's funny is we, we thought we'd dealt with every emergency known to mankind out on the road. You know, Patrick broke his legs. Uh, it was not a bother. You know, we, we missed one show. Um, and then the pandemic came along like, oh, you know what? <laughs> this was not in our playbook here. Yeah. Uh, so that, um, we, uh, we didn't, we did not see that one coming. But anyway, we're back out on the road and everything's, like I say, everything's starting to drop back into place and the audiences are coming out and uh, the energy is, uh, the energy is flowing again. So happy for that. That brings me to, uh, what should folks expect for your upcoming Akron, Ohio show? Um, you know, m- uh, more of the same. Obviously, we're um, we are delving back into our catalog of um, of music um, and and pulling some deep cuts out to play during the evening and uh, you know varying up the, the the dynamics. As I said in the set list, um, it's always an energetic time, and I'm sure uh, the crowd will uh, you know will get them on their feet and uh, everybody will go home uh, with that with that smile. <laughs> that I spoke about. I'm sure they will. All right. Well, uh, is there anything else that you would like to say or, or tell folks about you or, or the upcoming tour? Uh, no, we've got a new fiddle player, Natalia Kay. Um, it's, uh, she's been a wonderful addition to the band, so very excited to be playing with her. And, um, you know, look out for a new album uh, within this next 12 months. Cool. Uh, have any of the new album songs sort of made their way into that? No, we're, we're so close. You know, it's... Um, um, we're, we're so close to getting them um, stage ready. We've sort of some of them are ready to go, but now we're sort of prepping for the hiking part of this tour, which will be mostly our popular. It'll be the sort of best of Gaelic Storm, yeah. so that, you know. Um, so, um, but uh, um, they'll be they'll be debuting um, shortly after the uh, the spring tour. Well, that's very exciting. All right. Well, that's about it for All me, right. but thank All you right, so much for uh, making time for me today. Yeah, thank you. All right, well, thank you.